Now that we've looked at exponential functions and how they behave, let's look at their inverse called logarithms. Let's consider this exponential equation, y equals b to the x. Now, let's flip the sides. Still the same function, isn't it? And I'm going to change the representative letters to make things a little easier for you, okay? You mind telling me what this is all about, mister? I'm going to make it b to the e equals n, okay? Rather than b to the x equals y, and I'll tell you why. I'm going to say b is the base, which we had before. Ooh, yes. e is the exponent. That seems logical. <laughs> and n is just a number. Okay, let's speak in plain English. How about that? Now, if you don't start making more sense, we're going to have to put you in a home. Logarithms, sounds like a fancy word, doesn't it? Logarithms are just exponents. Means the same thing. We could say here the exponent using base b for number n is e, couldn't we? Let's look at it again. The exponent using base b for the number n is e. Well, we can also write it this way. Red. The logarithm using base b for the number n is e, is the exponent e. Because exponents are logarithms. They're the same thing. Exponents are logarithms. You've got to get that down. So the logarithm equals the exponent. This is two forms of writing uh, logarithms. One is I'll call exponential form on the top. The other one I'll call logarithm form. Now there's going to be, in every problem, it's going to be one easier way to write them. You need to be able to write it both ways. And going from one form to the other, I'll call the old switcheroo. Remember again, exponents are logarithms. Darn tootin'. And of course, logarithms are exponents. Uh, excuse me, Professor Brainiac. Now, since logarithms are exponents, they're going to follow the same rules as exponents. Guess why we just uh, reviewed the rules of exponents? Because they're the same rules of logarithms. You are correct, sir. Now, what would you do with a brain if you had one? let's practice this old switcheroo. Let's rewrite 2 to the 4th equals 16 in logarithm form. Right now it's in exponential form. We would write the logarithm using base 2 to get the number 16 is 4. Let's try a backward switcheroo. We have the logarithm using base 5 to get the number y is x. Well, we know the base is 5. And remember, the exponent is the logarithm, is the x. So we would rewrite this y equals 5 to the x. The number y is the base 5 to the exponent x. Do that again. Let's go back and forth. The number 5 to the exponent 3, uh, sorry, the base 5 to the exponent 3 equals the number 125 could be rewritten. The logarithm using base 5 of the number 125 is the exponent, of course a logarithm is an exponent, well, da. 3. Now why would we want to know how to do the old switcheroo? What a dumb thing to do. Well it isn't dumb when you have to solve equations. If we tried to solve this equation in its current form we might have a little trouble. Let's pull the old switcheroo and see if it doesn't look easier. Let's rewrite this that is now in logarithm uh, format. Let's write it in exponential format. Recall, I go right to the base. We know we're going to write the base first. So 8 to the x, or 8 to the what power is 64? Well, hey, this is great, man. we know the answer is 2. Wait a minute. What about this one? Let's rewrite it in exponential form. 
the base 4 to what power, recall that the logarithm is the exponent, the base 4 to what exponent is 64? I make this look good. This isn't so bad, is it? Let's switch things around a little bit. Well, we'll still pull the old switcheroo. Hopefully it'll be easier. I'm going to go the base 5 to the what power? Remember that the log is the exponent. So this time we're going to go 5 to the third power equals the number x. Well, what is 5 to the third power? Not too bad now if you just restate it using the old switcheroo. Now since these are exponents, we're going to have to remember all the rules of exponents. So, remember the rules of negative exponents. x to the negative a equals not just the opposite, but rather the multiplicative opposite, the reciprocal. So x to the negative a equals 1 over x to the a. Remember that. And now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! So, using that, let's try and solve this logarithmic equation by rewriting it in exponential form. The base is 3, the exponent is x. The number is 1 ninth. What do I have to raise 3 to to get 1 ninth, or 1 over 3 squared. Because 3 squared is 9. I want 1 over 3 squared. We want to raise it to the negative tooth because that will give us the reciprocal. Okay, You have to know all the rules of exponents here to solve logarithm equations. Let's try another one. The logarithm base 4 of 1 fourth equals x. Well if we rewrite it 4 to the x or 4 to the what equals 1 fourth. We've got negative 1 as the answer because 4 to the minus 1 is the reciprocal of 4 or 1 fourth. Now practice makes perfect. Thank you, sir. May I have another? Let's do another. We're going to rewrite it in exponential form. 10 to the what equals 1 over 100. Well, it's not so bad, is it? Remember, 10 to the tooth is 100, and we want 1 over 100. So the answer was negative 2. If you use negative in an exponent, you get the reciprocal. Now, there's some other things about uh, exponents that we're going to need to remember. The eighth root of x, written as an exponent, is x to the 1 over a. That's going to be important. Uh, excuse me, Professor Brainiac. For instance, x to the 1 half Dude. is the square root of x, remember? I know that, dude. We don't write the 2, but you have to know that. Gee, let me think. Guess what x to the 1 third is? Shazam. It's the cube root of x. Okay? Could it be? x to the 1 fifth would be... Dude the fifth root of x. So this is all rules of exponents are going to come into play when we do and work with logarithms. Hmm. So with that said, the logarithm using base 25 of 5, well let's rewrite it. What do I have to raise 25 to to get to 5, to get to a smaller number? I'll give you a hint. Two. You've got to take the square root. So the exponent here is going to be the representative of the square root, 1 half. Now I want you to relax your mind here a little bit, because if you put this calculation, log base 25, into your calculator, quite likely you're not going to get a half. Quite likely well, this is all very you're going to get a decimal approximation, 0.5. So logarithms, while they have uh, very logical meaning here and uh, related to exponents, they're going to be very practical in real life and probably you're going to want to look at them as uh, decimal approximations. Now, what am I gonna do? now let's rewrite this one. Log base x. What is the base for the number 243 using an exponent of 5? 
So what to the fifth power is 243? I'll give you a hint, it comes out even. What number raised to the fifth power is 243? Well, if you take the fifth root of both sides, Remember how to take the fifth root? 243 to the one-fifth power. Make sure you put the one-fifth in parentheses, and you'll get... Comes out even, I told you. Holy heart failure. This one isn't so bad. Keep your discipline. Don't get afraid. Rewrite it. What's the base? 8. What's the exponent? X. So 8 to what power is a half? Wow. 8 to what power is a half? Well, let's get from 8 to 2 first. Hmm. 8 to the 1 third is 2. The cube root of 8 is 2. Well, we don't want 2, do we? We want 1 over 2. So our answer is the reciprocal of that. So our final answer Damn. is negative 1 third. Got it? Ooh, it could even be negative 0.3333, because that's what negative one-third is, isn't it? Okay, we've got to relax our minds here. Let's look at another rule that hopefully you'll recall about exponents. Remember zero as an exponent? Five to the second times five to the zeroth, we know adding exponents is 5 to the second. 2 plus 0 is 2. Which means, what does 5 to the 0 have to be if we multiply 5 to the second by it and get 5 to the second? This expression has got to equal 1, doesn't it? Well, in fact, any number to the 0 power is going to result in 1. Well, what will the logarithm of 1 always be then? 7 to what power equal... Now, I'm not asking you what you multiply 7 by. I'm saying what do you have to raise 7 to to get 1? We just told you. And that's the answer. Think about it. 7 to the 0, anything to the 0 power equals 1. So the logarithm of 1 will always be 0, regardless of which base you use. That's why I hope you appreciate the graph of any logarithm function, no matter what base, is going to look something like this with the point one zero on it. the point one zero because the logarithm of, of any base of one is going to be zero and in fact this logarithm graph is always going to be the inverse function of as we said before the exponential remember what that looked like and remember what it is to be an inverse an inverse is the mirror about the line y equals x so, son of a gun, the logarithm is the inverse of the exponential function. Okay, well, anyway, it's your turn now. Go ahead and practice. Go do your homework.